Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization 2.5x series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode we will try to bring back the shuttle to the KSC after delivering our Carpenter module and the Z1 module to the space station. This is the Kerbosity shuttle, the second of our shuttles. And I notice a bit of a disturbing dislocation on this shuttle as uh, this piece right here is sort of jutting out here and if you can see, it's supposed to actually line up with this line. And back here it lines up with that line, but for some reason it's tilted down right now. And I don't know why. It's a pretty big piece, it includes the, the thrust section here. And I'm not too sure why it's tilted like that. Also, there seems to be a dislocation on the wing piece. That it is attached, uh, that is attached to it, right? This wing piece is attached to this part and oh, I think it is and it's jutting out at the top here and I don't know when that happened obviously uh, this piece and this piece should be in line with each other so I'm not sure how this is going to go I'm also not sure exactly where I want the center of mass on this but tentatively I have decided to move as much mod propellant to the front as possible so we filled up the mod propellant tanks in the shuttle and its nose, the shuttle cockpit and its nose. We'll see how that works out for us. But uh, so, a little bit of trepidation here. Don't know why that happened or when it happened. Uh, we may need to do some auto strutting. I don't think there's any internal auto strutting on the shuttle right now. Uh, okay, this one is auto strutted to the root part. Maybe on the flip side we should. Okay, this and this were auto strutted to the root part. And maybe we shouldn't do that? Is it a coincidence that the two parts that are off kilter are the ones that were auto strutted to root part? Don't know, but it's possible. So I'll give that some thought. Maybe uh, the landing gear, by the way, is auto strutted to heaviest part, but I can't tell whether it's off or not. It's technically attached to this part, though, so maybe. Anyway. So on that note, uh, let's proceed with our landing operations. Uh, the only thing I've changed about the landing script right now is that we've reduced the target periapsis for the retro burn, and we'll see how that works for us. Maybe it's not enough. Probably it's not enough. So we're probably aiming for another splashdown, but hopefully it's closer to the KSC this time. So edit uh, shuttle reentry. Uh, long name, maybe maybe it was just re-entry. Nope, it's there. Okay, so let me get the re new re-entry script with just that one edit. Um, the edit occurs here. Actually, I could just edit in here and say 37, but just for safety's sake, I'll use the version in my notepad. Okay, so run shuttle re-entry. Okay, it is going to time warp to the coordinate for the retro burn. And that's something else I can change. I can have it retro burn earlier. Of course, everything does somewhat depend on what our initial orbit is. But this is going to be a typical orbit for all of our missions. So, yeah, it's probably not going to vary too much. After this mission, we're going to launch some more station modules to Minmus, and uh, this time we're going to launch more than just one. Our first launch, we only launched one module to Minmus, but I think we can launch a larger section given what we did with the moon in the previous episode. After that, maybe we can launch a surface base module if we have time. Oop, dawn. And again, I need to figure on a new sun flare because that dawn isn't dramatic enough the way it is. Okay, the retro burn is complete. The periapsis is 9 kilometers. And again, the 37 kilometers there is the base periapsis and then it, is, it subtracts from that based on the mass of the shuttle. So based on our current mass, it brought us to 9 kilometers. We're not that far away from the home continent. We're right here. I don't know. Seems like we should start the retro earlier. 
the reason why we start at where we do is because of testing before. I mean, I had tested the shuttle to make sure that, that it could operate in 2.5x, obviously. No point trying to use a shuttle for these launches unless we know that it will work properly. And it seemed like it needed to retro at the particular location that it does. But then something changed, so I'm confused. In particular, while I was testing, the altitude for the atmosphere was 91 kilometers, and now it's 84.7 kilometers. I don't mind it being 84.7 kilometers, uh, but I need to readjust to that now. We are slowing down, but probably not enough. With the cockpit glowing red, I don't dare try and take control and pitch down myself just yet. Well, I'm looking at the target distance here, and that's the distance to the KSC. 170 and falling. The KSC is in sight, but we're still at 50 kilometers in altitude. The launch script is trying to turn because it reads that our heading is a little bit off from where the KSC is, and that's just going to get worse. Okay, I'll try and force the issue now and take manual control. Uh, of course, that loses all grip that we had on the atmosphere for a bit. Well, we're closer to that one island that should have the island runway. That's nice. I guess we'll have to set down on that island or at least try to, but it's a bit dangerous. It's actually safer to try and land on the water. Wait, I think I see the runway there. It's just really, really tiny compared to the way it usually is. Well, let's make an attempt for it. I don't know if we're close enough actually now since I see my speed bleeding off. I should have made more of an effort to glide. It's interesting, this wing is higher on this side, but lower on this side. It's... <laughs> this is just very horrible somehow. Uh, this isn't very good, because as it is, we're probably going to land right on the coast, and that's a rough slope. Maybe we should just splash down, it might be safer. Then again, trying to make land could be instructive. Ooh, that is bad. Uh... Whoa! Well, it was a capacity like landing. Oh, well, when I say landing, ow, ow, ow. Ah. Uh... Okay, 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 stop, stop, stop before we kill the Kerbals. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, maybe SAS is better. I don't know what's going on. It's breakdancing. Well, it wanted to splash down somehow. Oh, the Kerbosity. It's going to take a while to rebuild this one. Well, that was a bad judgment call. We should have just gone for the splash down in the first place. But, here we are. We are technically closer to the KSC than we were last time, but uh, clearly some work to do here. Uh, well, anyway, on to the next mission. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, this is a launch of three modules for our Minmus station. Uh, so this is Pistachio, Super Fudge Crunch, and Mackina Island Fudge. And uh, we'll see how it goes, obviously on a Duna 6 rocket. and. In particular, we've got a different launch script this time. Uh, this one will attempt to do a burn at Apoapsis, so it'll try to coast to Apoapsis, hopefully. Uh, so that's the main question mark, whether this is going to work out with that uh, change to the launch script. So let's see. Run Duna 6. Could throw an error right here for all I know. If I missed a particular, if I misspelled something or missed a period somewhere. Okay, we have ignition. Good. 
I forgot the roll thing again, but that is not a critical situation. Okay, separation. Okay, the boosters have separated. And everything looking good. Once again, I'm not entirely sure whether we're going to need to stage first or separate the fairings first. Keeping an eye on that. It's tough, but, you know, if we want to keep our time to apoapsis in check at all, we need to go a little bit shallow. And that means getting pretty high up on those velocities while still below 50 kilometers. Okay, fairing separation. Off they go, and... Well, we've got some heating on the modules again, but they'll probably be alright. So, this is the new bit to our Minma station. It'll dock to the first module here. And I've retrofitted it with some uh, mod propellant tanks and some RCS ports. Initially, we weren't supposed to have those, but uh, we'll have a dock on its own instead of having a tug do it for it. We also added some solar arrays so it can power itself. And probably power the rest of the station while we're waiting for the main, main solar arrays to arrive. Okay, we are nearing orbit, but given the time to apoapsis, it's not possible to actually get into a circular orbit like this, even with the script throttling down, so it's going to have to eventually coast to apoapsis. We'll see what it does. Even I'm in suspense as to what's going to happen next year. The adjustment is based on the Titan II launch uh, in the previous episode, but it doesn't work quite the same. Okay, it's shut down and it is coasting. Uh, you could continue puffing the RCS to get it to the right orientation launch script. Too bad I can't really help. But I don't know why it stopped puffing it. It's going to end up not being pointed at prograde when it ignites the engines. Yep. Yeah. And because of that, it's going to be a little bit lopsided. Well, 130 by 125 is not as bad as before. Improvement. Still working on it. Okay, let's transfer to Minmus. The cost is 1,500 meters per second. And once we get there, we have a burn to match orbits with our station. And that burn will cost 449 meters per second. And we'll have a uh, encounter right about there. Assuming the burns all go right, which they won't, but we'll get close. We're good. We are fine. Plenty of Delta V, and we should be able to deorbit this as well. If we want to, or we could try and... Well, we have to, because uh, the docking port to dock to the station is right here. So we can't have a tag along. We're going to have to get rid of it. Okay. Good to 0.1 meter per second, and of course this is all off. Let's replot this. Let's see, that gets us closer. Unfortunately, more of a gap than I had planned, and not in the right place either. Ooh, yeah, it's getting worse. You know what? Let's uh, approach from a distance here, but with less inclination difference and we'll capture like that oh, oh too much and flatten that all right that will do okay this is on its way to Minmus and let's do the cinematic thing off it goes three modules we're making good progress. In total, after this, there will be 
the Cherry Garcia module, the Neapolitan module, and then it's just the trusses and that big external tank that stores the fuel. You'll note that I'm taking pains to build things before we send the Kerbals. And that's even true of our Kerbin orbit station, so we want everything to be set up first and then our Kerbals arrive and take charge and do their thing. The reason for that is simple, of course, once we send the Kerbals, we have to send life support. And that, that's a complication all on its own. Okay, we see our separation at closest distance there. Oop. A little bit more... Uh, 4.5 is the best we can do. Well, we still have a relative inclination at that point, so... Is that really... Well, I guess... That's not exactly right there anyway. Okay, it should be fine. Let's get over there. Now you might wonder, well, we have a lot of extra Delta V on this stage, why couldn't we have sent more modules? Well, that's because of the way they have to be docked. And uh, it would have been a very awkward fairing if we tried to launch anything more than this particular part. This was the largest continuous chunk that we could launch at this point. Okay, let's just use this stage to zero us out, and then we'll approach the station with the module, the module's SAS all, oh, okay, that wasn't zeroing. The engine here is a bit too powerful for all this right now. Okay, it's enough. Let's stop that. Stop, 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 stop. Separate. Okay, control from here. All right. Now you may turn. Okay, that's good. We can deorbit this right now. And we have to because the electric charge is going to run out. Okay, it is deorbited. Somebody suggested calling the station Baskin Robbins, but that's not really. Well, the downside is I don't remember what Meep stood for. I'll probably need to ask my audience, uh, my Twitch audience, to remind me what the heck it was supposed to stand for, assuming anybody remembered. But, um, yeah. Um, doing the ice cream thing is enough. We don't need to call it Baskin Robbins. Besides, I, I got the feeling that um, there was more of a Ben and Jerry's thing going among my audience. Not sure, though. Baskin Robbins is hardly the ultimate in ice cream, though. Okay, this is what I wanted. And we want to control from here. Pretty sure this is the end that's supposed to dock to the rest of it. Now, where is it? There it is. Uh, no, that's, that's the spent stage. Well, I'm going to line up the CBM here and the CBM there and hope that that's correct but I'm not actually sure oh great yeah. okay well, let me turn that off um, okay find the proper rotation now Okay, we are docked. Wow. Alright, uh, looks lined up to me. Looks good enough. Hopefully that's all good. And there we have it. That is our Minima station as it is right now. We've got an airlock on it even. We've got a uh, Kerbatat. And we've got an agricultural module. It's looking good. Alright. Next thing. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is a resupply mission to our Kerbin Orbit Station, and we have for that an ATV appropriately launching on the Ariane 5, and so we'll try this out as our resupply solution with the food, water, and oxygen for our Kerbals, and uh, see if it works out for us. It may or it may not. Maybe we could come up with a better system, but this seemed like a good place to start. So let's say run Ariane 5 and I've changed the script again to try and 
add some refinements to the way we conclude our orbit and we'll see if those work out. Let's get vessel info up and we're off. Bit of a shimmy in this rocket. Again, I can probably figure out how to stop the roll from doing that. It's a little bit complicated. Certainly not the simplest thing that I've tried to do in KOS, but I think I have an idea. Uh, from this view, the decals are sort of floating on the boosters, so let's just go back to this view. Uh, oh, uh, they're over... Dang it! Why does it always resize them? I need to... Maybe I just need to get rid of that whole idea of um, rescaling them. Yeah, I think it's too much trouble. Okay, the boosters have separated cleanly. We are expecting to dump the fairings before the first stage runs out, but I'm curious whether the decal is actually going to get in the way of the fairings since the de decal is missized here. Hmm. That may be a problem. The ATV, by the way, is also from Lonesome Robots, the same as the producer of this rocket. Okay, no, the staging is gonna go the other way. Alright. <sighs> Upper stage with the floaty decals and uh, five more kilometers in altitude until the fairings separate. Nope, they uh, got away cleanly, amazingly enough. Okay, well, the launch script is doing the usual trickle of thrust. It's basically coasting to apoapsis. It's just using a tiny little bit of thrust to keep that apoapsis boosted up to 125 kilometers, which is, which is the planned apoapsis. So we will see how it does after that. Okay, it shut down at 125 as planned. Okay, uh, it has oriented excellently, actually, this time, so that's improved. Let me extend the solar panels while we're waiting for it to do the burn. Okay, solar panels are out, and it has started the burn. And shut down, 125 by 125. So I think we have it now. I think we have it now. So good times. Uh, let's get this stage off and deorbit that, because it does have a controller and some electric charge there. Let's see, and I believe it actually has a reaction. Well, it has those little RCS thrusters anyway. Alright, that's a negative periapsis there, and we can proceed. Let's target the station and make a rendezvous. Looks like it'll be easier to boost this to a higher orbit and let the station catch up as usual. Okay, we are cruising right by the station. You can see it right there. And now we're going to... Nope, not that one. That one. Kill our relative velocity to it. Very easy. This, this ATV is working great. It's perhaps carrying too much monopropellant and not enough food, water, and oxygen. We'll have to see about that. But let's stop with the station and see what we can do in the future. I might just ch uh, alter this part to take out an equal mass of my propellant and put in more food, water, and oxygen. Or I could make a new version of it. Uh, one version would be one to send to the moon or Minmus, uh, in which case it will use its own fuel to uh, make orbit around those and we'll keep it as is. And then another version for Kerbin orbit 
uh, and that will trade off the mild propellant for food, water, and oxygen. So I'll take a look at that. And again, any changes I make to any part will be in the colonization fixes file that I post on the video in the video descriptions. Curious thing, uh, it's not really pointed at the station, at least as far as the nav ball is concerned. Smart ASS not really orienting properly. Hmm. Well, we we will see. We want to dock to the tail end of Zvezda, or not Zvezda, uh, Titov. Zvezda is what it's called in, on the International Space Station, but we call it Titov. So, let's see if we can even do that properly. Fortunately, uh, however it wants to rotate, it can rotate and it's not going to be a problem. It's not like docking a station module. Okay, I need fine controls here. Overcorrecting too much. Oop, I think we bumped into it already. Yep, okay. Oh, wait, it's sort of meshing. I don't know, port active. Let me just turn that off. In theory, it would mesh like this. Oh, there we go. Okay, port passive brings it into dock. All right, we are docked. So now we have a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of food, water, and oxygen on the station. It strikes me that this is not much. But without a Kerbal on here, I can, well, I can go to VAB and easily tell how much it is, but um, we may need to scale up how much this ATV actually carries. Let's actually go to the VAB and take a look quickly before I conclude things. So here we have the ATV and it says, well, with one crew it's a year, two years. So if we send up a Gemini command pod. Oh, wait, where, where is it reading three crew from? The ATV can carry a crew person? Hmm, that's odd. Okay, well anyway, it looks like with three crew we can have 285 days, so that's a lot. That's a lot. I guess it's not as, uh, not as little in terms of supplies as I thought. It's just that the station has way more capacity than I thought possible or necessary. How much is it in terms of mass? Let's see, 12.089 tons if we get rid of, well, hold on. That's got 12.1 tons if we get rid of food, water, and oxygen. It's it's only like 0.3 tons or, or so of uh, food, water, and oxygen. Uh, the mod propellant, it's mostly mod propellant is what we've got in here. That's why I want, and I underfueled it too. That's why I want to trade off the mod propellant in favor of more food, water, and oxygen. But considering how little they consume, maybe I don't have to do that. Okay, well, anyway, uh, on that note, uh, and looking forward to sending crew up to our station now, because now it's supplied, we should start uh, sending crews up, and Kerbals will have a permanent presence in space now. So looking forward to that in the next episode. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.